And because I'm his child, he's going to hear me. Well, I don't know about you, church, but I need the God that I serve to hear me when I'm broken. I, I need him to hear me and stand by me. Yes, the first reason is because it's healthy for us. The second reason is because it gets God's attention. And the third reason is because it releases our breakthrough. But what are you trying to say, preacher? I, I'm trying to tell somebody that that, that you, you may be crying, but by your crying, it, it, it gets God's attention. And by getting God's attention, it, it, it's causing God to take action. And that action is God is preparing to work a miracle in your life. In other words, by us sending a distress signal to God through our cry, God begins to move on our behalf. Doors that were closed begin to open up. Uh -huh. Things begin to work in our favor. Obstacles begin to move out of the way. Furthermore, I'm trying to tell you that my crying discharges God's grace and mercy on my situation. In our text, the widow's weeping caused Jesus to touch the coffin of her son and call him back to life. And just as Jesus resurrected the widow's son, he can cause those dead situations in our lives to rise up and live. God can speak life into discouragement. God can speak life into confusion. God can speak life into embarrassment. God can speak life into sadness. He can speak life into broken communities. He can speak life into lifeless churches. He can speak life into whatever it is that will going through. And this is the good part is that my crying won't last forever. For on the other side of that crying, there's something else that's waiting for me. For the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I, I may be in my midnight hour right now. I, I may be crying right now. My heart may be heavy right now. Today. Yes, I believe that I need my breakthrough this morning, so I'm going to cry out unto God his own words. I, I'm going to cry out no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm going to cry out all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I'm going to cry out that hey, though I'm walking to the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to be in the evil, but God, you are with me. I'm not ashamed. I, I'm not afraid. I'm not Society places upon us the belief that we shouldn't cry. But I declare to you this morning that we need to cry. We need to cry because it's healthy. We need to cry because it gets God's attention. And we need to cry because it releases our breakthrough. Therefore, my cry is not a tool of weakness. But in actuality, it is a tool of victory. Because it gives me release over my situation. With this in mind, we need to be crying over our children. We, we need to be crying over our marriages. We need to be crying over our schools and crying over our communities. We need to cry over the city of New Orleans. We need to cry over Orleans Parish. We need to cry over the state of Louisiana. Cry over the United States of America. Cry over the world. Why? Because it's healthy. Why? Because it gets God's attention. Why? Because it releases our breakthrough. And in today's society, we need a breakthrough. I can hear somebody asking the question, why do I need to be crying over my children? Well, I need to cry because I need God to step in and show them that not only do I love them, but God loves them more. And because of this, they can call on God when I'm not around to lead God and protect them. Why should I cry over my marriage? Well, I need to cry because I need God to step in and show us how to keep Jesus in the center of our relationship so that we can be rooted and grounded and bound and tangled up so much 
that no demon, no devil, no evil, no anything will be able to come in and separate what God has joined together. Why do we need to cry over our schools? We need to cry because I need God to step in and allow us to realize that we need prayer in our schools. We need God's presence to surround the grounds and protect our children. All over the room this morning, we need to be crying. Crying for a miracle. Crying for a breakthrough. Crying for hope. Crying for love. Crying for peace that passes all understanding. Crying for the joy that nothing can take away from us. Crying for salvation for ourselves and our loved ones. We should be crying this morning. I wish I had some people in the room that knew how to cry. I wish I had some people that would cry with me today. I, I wish I had some people who knew what it meant to cry out for the Bible tells me that at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is King of kings and Lord of lords. Why don't you help me cry out Jesus in the house on this morning? For no matter what our situation may be, if we dispatch Jesus on the situation that he Songwriter said that Jesus fix it for you, for he knows just what to do. Whenever you pray, let him have his way, and he will fix it for you. Do, do I have any believers in the house today that God can fix it? I, I don't know about you. Somebody may know him as a healer. I, I know him as a deliverer. I know him as my provider, my protection, my shelter. If you want to find your way out of the situation that you're in, cry. But don't just cry as the loss of crying, as if you have no hope. But cry unto God and allow Him to work a miracle on your behalf. The Word of God for the people of God. Praise the Lord, church. We heard a powerful message today from the pastor. And we know today that some of us might be in a crying moment. Things might be going on in your household that you feel that you might just want to throw in the towel. Something might be going on at work with the supervisor and if you don't put the Holy Ghost on them, you might hurt somebody. Somebody in there knows what I'm talking about. Amen? Can I keep it real this morning? But if you don't know Jesus, amen, if you don't know Jesus in the part that it says you need to give your life to Jesus right now, while you still have time, the enemy is busy on the streets. You can walk right out of the church this morning on Valley Street, and there might be a bullet flying with somebody's name on it. Or you might have gone into some situations right in your family, like this week I just buried my cousin. We don't know. The only guarantee in this life is Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him today, I bet you would beg you to give your life to him. Richard Allen knew that when Jesus came into his life, he felt the chains fall off. Some of us need that breakthrough that the pastor was talking about this morning. So if you don't know Jesus, while you still have time, won't you come today? Won't you give God your heart and the preach of your hand? Amen? Or maybe you might need a church home where there's preachers on fire for God. If you want to align yourself with Union Bethel, won't you come today? As the choir sings.
sisters, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Oh, yeah. 